Hey everybody. I put together a little video that shows my cold side setup as well as outlining how I do a pressure transfer. Over the years I've wandered into spunding and natural carbonation as well as fermenting under pressure. When you ferment under pressure you also have to transfer the contents out to your keg under pressure. Uh, this can be kind of complex setup and this topic comes up a lot in conversations on forums. The setup has a lot of benefits because it keeps all the oxygen away as well as sort of pre-carbonating your beer before transfer. So, hope this video helps. It's going to show all the details of the setup and the connections and let's get to it. This is my fermenter. It's a product made by Kegland which is called a Keg Mentor. And I use a normal, pretty good sized wine fridge with a temperature controller. This is my main spending valve. This is also made by Kegland. You'll see I have a lot of their connectors and items as we go through the video. I'm also using EVA barrier tubing, which is very important. This is the connection to the keg. You can also see the return coming all the way around into the bubbler jar. This is known as a fermentation purge setup. And this is utilizing the gas that gets blown off during fermentation to purge your keg of all the oxygen that might be inside. You can see I have the tubing connected to the gas post on the fermenter. Gas is going to come out of that line, wrap around, pierces the outside of the fridge. Let me close the door here for a second. There we go. Okay, so it travels down this tubing into the liquid out connector of the keg. This brings the gas to the bottom of the keg, which then comes back up and it'll go out the gas post. From there, the tubing is connected up into the spooning valve. That's where we can set our pressure. You can see I have it there at 15 PSI right now. Then travels through the spooning valve down into the water bubbler. Here's some detailed shots of how I got the tubing out of the fridge. On my fridge, it was best to be in the very front. You can see I pierced it just drilling through the top and then drilling through the bottom. I made the hole pretty tight, so it's pretty much a pressure fit on the outside. I did seal it on the inside with a little piece of rubber. I'm also using an Inkbird temperature controller, as you've probably already seen. This is the inside temperature probe, which I've used plumber's putty to attach to the fermenter. My wine fridge only goes to 65 Fahrenheit, so this helps me get above 65 when I need to. So that's the setup. Let's move on to actually performing a pressure transfer. Here are all the items I use for the transfer, starting with the spending valve, the T and its two connectors for the gas and the liquid, some EVA barrier tubing with liquid posts on each side, a one liter bottle, some star sand, a CO2 tank, and an air blower, which I'll talk about in a little bit. The beer's been crashed to 40, 41 degrees Fahrenheit, and is still at around 15 PSI. Just want to show you this little contraption I made. I bought it at Harbor Freight. It's a little air gun blower, and I've affixed a keg post to the other end. So this is a, a way for me to attach it to CO2 tank via the disconnect. And you'll see that in a little bit when I use it. it it's kind of an extreme measure, but it, it's very cost effective. So I just go ahead and do it anyway. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is put this tubing in some star sand to just sanitize the ends. The inside's already been sanitized from brew day. But since it's been sitting out, I just decided to go ahead and put it in there again to be safe. OK, 
Okay, next we're gonna set up our transfer bottle. This is a T that Kegland makes. It's threaded on each end for its post, which you can attach the quick disconnects to. That's the liquid post, and this is the gas post. And then the bottom has threading for normal one and two liter soda bottles or water bottles. Very affordable, very convenient, very accessible. So basically you're gonna screw this on the bottle and use it to catch the first runnings out of the fermenter. Here's my spooning valve, and this is where the gas line connects to the valve. You can see I've added a quick disconnect that I've just shoved in the one part of the T. You can see it right there exposed. That was convenient, and uh, everything just fits in there nicely. So I've disconnected the hose from the keg to the spooning valve. Now I'm gonna disconnect the keg from the fermenter. Now we're gonna move the keg in front of the fridge. First step is to connect the bottle to the keg, what we're gonna do is equalize the pressure. So you can see the, the pressure in the keg went into the two liter and now they're both equalized. It's very important to have the same pressure all throughout. We'll be using gravity more than pressure today to move the beer. All right, so I'm taking off the gas line, which we won't be using anymore. I'm taking the other tubing out of the star sand. It's sanitized now. First, I'm going to hook it up to the fermenter. Okay, you can see a little bit of beer coming out the top. Remember, the fermenter is at about 15 PSI. So here's my one liter bottle. What I'm gonna do now is connect beer line to the one liter bottle. Remember the one liter bottle is also at 15 PSI too. So the flow is really not gonna be that strong. See how it kind of goes away. So then I take the spooning valve Connect it to the gas post. I'm just going to open it up to where it barely starts to bleed some gas away. And you'll see that the flow will then start up again. And I do this just to get the first little bits of maybe yeast and uh, any kind of hot particles just kind of Make everything clear before it gets into the keg. Now what I try to do is take the line off while it's still flowing. That way the liquid will be all the way to the end of the tubing as best as I can get it. Okay, next step. This is the maybe overkill part, but I'm gonna blow some CO2 up in the quick disconnect while I'm connecting it in the hopes to keep any little bit of oxygen out. Okay, next step, I'm gonna take the tubing and we're just gonna bleed a little bit of CO2 from the keg through it just to make sure it's, it's purged. And I'm gonna connect it to the fermenter and once it gets connected, the flow will begin. So I've started a timer just to show you how long the transfer usually takes. Slower is better. And it takes a little while, so I did a time lapse.
So I've noticed as the transfer progresses and the siphon gets weaker and weaker that it helps to disconnect the gas and just kind of bleed a little bit off and that lowers the pressure in the receiving keg and that helps speed up the flow and I find I have to do this once or twice towards the end which is not great but it, it just has to be done okay the transfer is complete And the final thing I do is just bleed a little more CO2 out of the keg. And it's just in the hopes of purging any oxygen that might have wound up inside the keg during the transfer. Just push a little more out and that's it. It's finished. Here are a few tips. Uh, first one being you might want to over carbonate your beer a little bit. Uh, the whole transfer process involves a lot of purging and in general just your pressure is just going to decrease a little bit after the, the transfer is done. Uh, next would be gravity versus force. Um, I just think the gravity approach is a little bit easier and it's a little slower as well. But if you can't raise your fermenter then you have to use tank gas. Uh, next would be, I like to purge everything via the hose instead of right on the actual keg post. I think any kind of distance you can have from an oxygen ingress point away from your keg is, is always going to be better. And the last one being just, the, just understanding the basic concept is you want to equalize the whole system and then just lower the pressure on the receiving end and the beer will then flow that direction. Okay, well, I hope this video has helped everybody. It's a great setup and I've really enjoyed using it. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank <laughs> you.